Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and I am one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. So over at Book Riot, we've been launching a lot of podcasts recently. If you watched Monday's video, you would have seen Wallace talking about how there's going to be sort of like a spinoff from all the books called All the Backlist. If you're subscribed to all the books already, uh, you'll get episodes of All the Backlist as well. And it's where Liberty is going to talk about backlist books. Another one we launched recently is called SFF Yeah, it's a science fiction and fantasy related podcast that's hosted by Jen Northington, who currently does get booked um, and Sharifa who does the Tuesday videos here on this channel and then I'm co-hosting a podcast it's called Red or Dead and it's a mystery thriller suspense related podcast and I'm super excited to be doing it um, I'm doing it with one of the other contributing editors Katie McLean the first episode just went live this previous Friday and yeah I'm super excited about it so I thought that sort of in honor of that I would talk a little bit about some of the mystery and thriller and adjacent related books that I've been reading recently. I'm going to talk about two that I've already read, one that I'm currently reading, and one that's sort of like next up on my TBR to read. All of these are varying in terms of the style of mystery thrillers type stories. Um, if you read the genre at all, you know that there are different types. There are like cozy mysteries and like straight up thrillers and like police procedurals and all different types of stuff. So these, it doesn't cross every genre, but I feel like there's a little bit of everything sort of covered here. The first one is Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinnenborough probably mispronounced that. Uh, this is a British author and this is a relatively new release that came out earlier this year, I believe. In this story, there is this woman named Louise who is a single mom. She is starting a new job and the night before she decides to go out to the bars to just have a little bit of fun, she ends up meeting this guy and they sort of like hook up a little bit. And then the next day she goes to work and she realizes that guy is her boss and also that he's married. And so they sort of decide that they're just like gonna forget that it ever happened sort of situation. And then Louise meets his wife and they form sort of like this interesting friendship um, and things sort of devolve from there. I was a little bit skeptical about this book originally because it felt like it was trying to cash in on that whole sort of female unreliable narrator big twist at the end sort of thing that's happening and so I went into it kind of skeptical that I would actually enjoy it but I actually did kind of enjoy it a lot. I was really intrigued to see how it was all gonna go. It's one of the few books where I feel like I really could not guess that this was going to be coming. I know for a fact that people are not gonna like this book because the way that everything unfolds will not be to certain people's tastes. I thought it was just really interesting at least in the fact that it is definitely unique and there's no way to guess uh, where this book is going to go. So yeah, if you are someone who enjoys the genre and feels like you can't get surprised really, uh, this one might be a good one to pick up and to see how you feel about it because it definitely does not go where you think it's going to go. I can say that for sure. The next one that I read was IQ by Joe Ide. This one came out last year and I picked this one up because I found out that Joe Ide has a new book, a second book in sort of like the series coming out in the fall. And I really enjoyed it. Um, in this book, you are following this guy named Isaiah. He lives in Los Angeles, what seems to be sort of like a poorer part of Los Angeles. Um, and he is really, really smart. His brother sort of has him on track to like go to college and to accomplish things with his life. Their parents had passed away. But then one day, Isaiah's brother Marcus is killed in sort of like a hit and run accident. And he sort of spirals and it's about him sort of figuring out how to handle his life uh, from that point forward. And so he, because he is so smart, he ends up sort of like solving small crimes or solving small mysteries for people in his neighborhood. And it sort of builds from there. And so in this story, you are finding out a lot about Isaiah's sort of back history as well as history with one of his friends that's featured prominently in the story. But you're also solving the mystery of this one really prominent rapper who believes that someone's trying to kill him. So yeah, like I said, I really enjoyed this book. I think that Joe Ide did a really great job of creating this really interesting character in Isaiah. He doesn't give too much away and it seems like in the second book they're going to be exploring more about Marcus's death. Um, one of the character traits with Isaiah is that he wants to figure out who hit his brother's car. So I think they're going to be exploring more of that in the second story. I think that the mystery is really interesting and unique. Um, all the characters in here, I believe, are people of color. So that has an interesting angle as well. But it isn't like what you would typically think of as like urban fiction. I put the air quotes around there because there's a whole lot of problematic things with that label in general. But I think that in general, if you're someone who likes straightforward mystery stories, then IQ is one 
worth picking up. The one that I'm currently reading is Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. This is a brand new release. I was very lucky where someone over at Book Riot had a copy of this and was like, hey, anyone want it? And I was able to say dibs first. So in this story, there is this editor named Susan who edits a mystery series that feels very reminiscent of like an Agatha Christie type story. And she's reading like the latest novel in this series. And so you read sort of like one chapter from her point of view and then from that point forward you're reading like the actual mystery story so that's like the next like 200 or so pages um, and then you go back to Susan's point of view and she realizes there's more happening in the book than just the story itself. So I'm just at the part where the mystery itself is starting to wrap up. The mystery book in here is really, really interesting. It feels very, very reminiscent of Agatha Christie, like I said. So if you like her stories, I think that you would enjoy reading this book. But I also think that if you are a fan of this genre in general, it's playing with a lot of the ideas and tropes and themes that you are familiar with but it's adding sort of like this new meta layer to it all which I find to be just super super intriguing and like I said I'm only like halfway through this so I can't say for sure that I love it or anything yet but I'm really enjoying the experience so far. And then the one that I have up next to read is Woman Number 17 by Eden Lepucky. This one is being described as sort of like this noir type book. In this story there is this author named Lady Daniels who decides that she wants to take a break from her husband. They separate. Um, she goes off with the kids but as she's like writing her books she realizes that she needs some help so she places an ad and then this woman responds to the ad gets hired and the woman seems to form sort of like this unhealthy relationship with the family especially with the teenage son in this family and so I don't know much more than that I don't want to know much more than that but it seems to have a very like single white female sort of vibe, at least from the description starting out. So I'm super intrigued to uh, read this one. So again, I can't vouch for it as being really great, but I really enjoyed California and I'm really interested to see sort of how Eden Lepucky handles uh, noir type books, but this one will be read very, very soon. So yeah, that's everything that I have for you guys. If you've read any of these books, definitely let me know down below what you thought of them. Again, check out Red or Dead if you haven't already. I'll have a link to it in the description or you can find it on your podcast player of choice, iTunes or Stitcher, or whatever you use to listen to podcasts. Feel free to send me feedback because I would love to have feedback on the podcast because, you know, there isn't like the comment system like there is here on YouTube. So I would love to hear what you guys think of the podcast. Or if you want to let me know what mysteries or thrillers you've been reading recently, I'd love to hear that as well. It doesn't have to be brand new releases. I love reading backlist stuff too. So let me know what you've been enjoying lately. So yeah, that's all I have for now. And thanks for watching.